So we are now into our, our second um, CX book, and we were absolutely blown away when we contacted uh, Annette Franz and said, Annette, we're running the book club. Would you be interested? And Annette came back and said, oh, yes, I would. So welcome, Annette. It's really good to have you join the uh, CX book club. Thank you. And thanks for having me. I know this this is an exciting one. So thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. You're, you're, you're very welcome. So we have a, a number of things we're going to be doing together. We're going to be meeting up with the book club members. They will join us in a in a, 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 a session and they will pose questions directly to you. We'll, we'll send awesome. them in advance. You get a chance to have a look at them, but uh, they don't hold back. Uh, John Pico will tell you mm. they don't hold back, but it's great. It kind of really... <laughs> Helps you understand how CX practitioners are, are, are using and considering the book. And then we'll finish off with a like a live workshop where actually put the you know the principles of the book into practice and just demonstrate to everyone this is not something that sits on the shelf. This is something you you take into the office and you fix things with it, you build things with it, build to win, in fact, actually. But so to, today's session <laughs> is called Meet the Author. So we want to get to know you a bit better, Annette, as the right. as the author. Uh, we we know we all know you as the CX specialist and we know of the work that you do helping organizations but you're a writer as well and this is you know you're a serial writer now um so we want to understand more about you so perhaps yeah. you know you've chosen customer experience as a topic to write on um yeah. what what made you decide that you needed to take what you understood and, and put it into into print so i go go all began right which was when I first started my career in this space and why I got into it um because I've always loved writing and when I first was looking for you know my you know career coming out of college and everything I I looked in a newspaper I saw an ad for JD Power and Associates and I said you know what I love math and I love writing and what better than you know market research should take both of those into consideration and so I think you know that to me, I, I like I said, I've always loved writing. I wrote, I actually wrote a little book when I was, I think I was probably eight years old, seven years old. I, <laughs> you know, drew the pictures, wrote it all out, stapled the pages together and showed it to my mom and dad, you know, and that was sort of, that was actually my first book. <laughs> Didn't go anywhere, but it was my first book. But, but yeah, <laughs> but I do, I've, I've always had this love of writing and, and to, to put it all together, you know, after, Probably, you know, I started writing my blog back in 2011. Mm, okay. And at that point, I had already been in the profession for um, almost, almost 20 years. I started in 92 and that was 2011. So almost 20 years. And I just knew that, you know, there's, there's a lot of people coming into this profession it, everybody's new. I've already got 20 years in at this point or almost 20 years. I've got so much in my head. I've seen so much. I've heard so much. I've learned so much. I just want to get it down on paper and get it out of my head and just share it. And, you know, that's always the hardest thing because you think, oh, gosh, nobody's going to read this. <laughs> who, who wants to read this stuff? But you know what? Once I, you know, sort of got going, it, you know, it it just started rolling from there. And so so I think that's it. I, I really just wanted to get everything that I know and had learned and seen out of my head and onto, you know, onto paper and share it with others who were, you know, coming into this very new profession. Mm -hmm. Well, I think probably, you know, most leading practitioners have got a copy of customer understanding on their show because what, what that did was to kind of give us an appreciation of what yeah. it means to get underneath what really matters to your customer and put them on the agenda. Um, yeah. I think it helps a lot of individuals, you know, have that conversation internally and, and bring the customer in rather than just a soft thing that you, you, you hug. Now, I mean, we want to talk about built to win. The thing I'm interested in, that was, you know, you, you know, you don't have to say, oh, shocks, but that was a smash hit, wasn't it? I mean, it was a real smash hit. And it really kind of, yeah. I don't know if it was of the time, you know, but it still seems to stand the test of time. Yeah, After absolutely. That, the sales are still going strong. Going strong. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Did you, absolutely. Not, did you yeah. not think, right, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, I've, I've ticked the box. I've, I've, <laughs> my, my bucket list is complete. Yeah. Where did you start to think? Well, hang on a second. There's there's more to be written about here because yeah. obviously, built to win is is a is a more strategic focused book. Yeah. It, move, it moves yeah. away from the aspects of you know getting into the the psyche of the customer and moves towards actually frameworks for for businesses. So so how did your your thinking move from where you were to to get to a point of thinking built to win needs to be written? Yeah, you know, and I, I just want to share something, an interesting story about customer understanding. I had a conversation with one, one of the folks that was involved in, not one of the two authors, but one of the folks that was involved in, you know, writing um, uh, Inside Out. 
mm-hmm. and out oh, sorry, inside, outside in. Outside and, in. and she said, you know, custom, and it's like the different, you know, parts of what's really important when you're building out your customer experience strategy. And she said, customer understanding almost didn't make that book. And I said, right. what? And she's like, yeah, right. she's like, didn't think it was an important co- enough component to actually make that book. And it's like, well, you think about outside in what outside in means. <laughs> what would it have been about? <laughs> yeah. So interesting story there. So, but, but the interesting thing was, is when I first wrote that book, I had been going up on stages and talking about a lot of the content that's in that book. And I remember walking off the stage one day and saying, there's a book here. I mean, the reception that I get from what I'm talking about, there's a book here. And ironically, the same thing happened with Built to Win. I had been doing presentations on, this book has 10 principles, but I had been presenting on eight at the time. And and again, kind of at, there was this point where I went, you know, there's a book here. And, and, and I think the catalyst was really, for me, was hearing people talk about customer centricity and being customer centric and thinking, you know, it's not what you think it is. Mm-hmm. It's not what you think it is. It's not down in the weeds. And to your point, this book is more of a, it's more strategic. It's not down in the weeds. It's not a one department or a, one thing that we do or a, a task or a tactical. It really is, we have to step back and, and look at it to, as being organization wide. And there are things that leaders need to do in order for the business to be customer centric. So it's not just something that you as a customer experience professional does, or somebody in HR does or anything like that. It's got to be heard at that leadership and that, you know, senior leadership level. And, and I really wanted people to think differently about what it meant to be customer centric. And so that's, that's where that came from, you know, and that's why it's, it's, and again, it's sort of a culmination of, you know, here I am now 31 years into this profession. And, you know, when I wrote the book, I, I, I just, again, it was sort of the same thing, like over the last 30 years, what have I seen and heard and how has it all kind of come together? And how do I share that with people? And, and, and there's so many people who think they know what customer experience is or think they know what culture is or think they know what it means to be customer centric. And I, I, I've seen so much more than that. And I've done so much more than that. And I've worked with clients and the things that I talk about in the book, work with clients on those things. Those things are, they matter and they're important and they have to be in place if, you know, if you're going to build to win. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, so there, there we go. So you were you were on stage talking about the components of built to win, and yeah. did did others say to you, or did you just get that kind of bug again to go, hang on a second, I can turn this in into something? And then what do you yeah. do? How do you go from it being that's a good idea, which I'm sure a lot of people have, but yeah. to go from that to sitting down and starting to be disciplined and right is is a massive leap, isn't it? So how do you yeah. do that? Well, this one was different because the first one was I got off stage and I was like, okay, I have all my notes in the PowerPoint, dump it into Word and let's get started. And of course it completely changed from there, but that was sort of my motivation. I a six hour flight from New York back to Southern California. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm held captive here and I, I can work on this. I can do something. Right. So got started with built to win. The interesting thing was, is that I actually had a publisher reach out to me. I self-published right. customer understanding and I had a publisher reach out to me, um, Forbes, um, advantage Forbes. And they said, Hey, you know what? Are you ready to write your next book? And I was like, well, <laughs> yes and no, <laughs> yes, but okay. And, and really it just became, you know, they reached out to me at the beginning of April. We had our, you know, contract signed by, you know, at some point in May and I had 122 days to write the book. Now I was under somebody yeah. else's schedule, not my <laughs> schedule, <laughs> not my schedule. So yeah. yeah, that was pretty much it. And they gave me a book coach. We met every week and she's like, if you can do a chapter a week, you're golden. Right. And I was like, well, you know, sorry, I'm an overachiever. I did two chapters a week. So <laughs> <laughs> I was done a month early. And then I had that last month before the manuscript was due to just really go through it again and just make sure it made sense. Did I miss anything? Did I, you know, I got to fine tune. And the crazy part was, is even after I turned in the manuscript and at that point, there were only nine principles in the book. Right. Uh, about a week later, I woke up and, and I tell the story in the book too. I woke up in a sweat going, oh my gosh, how did I forget this principle? Why did I not, why did I not put that in there? You know? And so, so, um, so yeah, so that was the process I had, you know, for the second book, I had somebody 
pushing me and, and, yeah. and we got deadlines, we got deadlines, we got deadlines. And so, so that made that one. And you know what, it really was a matter of you, you just sit down and you have to make the time to do it. And if you don't write every day, or at least look at it every day and think about it every day, I was thinking about it every day, like 24 seven in my sleep, I'd wake up and I'd be like, okay, did I get this? Did I, you know, so those kinds of things. So that was, there was pressure on me and a deadline on me for the, for built to win to, to get that one done. So, but you know what, honestly, writing customer understanding wasn't that much different. I had my own deadline in my head for that one. And I just, you know, just pushed myself to mm. do it. Maybe it wasn't 122 days. It might've been a little bit. <laughs> and did that, did that work for you? I mean, did you find it was your, your publishing buddy with were, were they your your friend and your confident or were they kind of your your critic and your audience how did you use them the coach my book coach was awesome she was great uh bounced ideas she you, you know she would give me suggestions in terms of what worked for other authors maybe yep. not obviously not in the same genre but other business um book authors um, some of the things that are in there probably never would have been in there if it wasn't for her. Right. You know, just because of, just because of the way she's like, Hey, let's, why don't, why don't we think about this? Why don't we lay it out this way? And why don't you include this or that? And, and so, yes, uh, uh, very helpful. That was, you know, that was nice to have somebody to bounce ideas off of, you know, she doesn't understand necessarily this space and the, you know, workplace culture and that, but she'd worked on enough business books that she was, you know, she was a great guide for me to get that done. Absolutely. Excellent. And, and when it was kind of a wrap and, and, and ready to go, I mean, I don't know what it was like with customer understanding, but how are you? Are you anxious? Are you kind of, will they, will they like it? Or are you, are you a case of I'm sound? This is a good body of work. I know it is because I practice it. I mean, what's your feeling? Well, I think, you know what, I think that it's, it's all, there's always, and I mean, everything I write every day, every week is, oh, well, they like this. Does this make sense? Does this resonate? And I, you know, I did that with the book too. And I think that um, this one was different too, because to your point, this one's more strategic. It's not as in the weeds and tactical and here's how you get things done kind of book. And it's, and it's also a little bit of a leap for some people because a lot of people know me in this customer understanding world and mm. never really thought, as a matter of fact, I had somebody say to me, you know, it's been fun to sort of watch the progression of your career where you've kind of started market research and VOC and the consulting and that, you know, now you've gone from customer understanding. And now you're talking strategy and culture and all those things. And I said, well, you know, that's always been there. Honestly, that has always been there because we've always talked about, I've always worked with my clients and talked about, if you're going to do this customer understanding work, there's this background, there's things happening behind the scenes that have to be in place in order for that to actually make it to fruition and actually be able to make changes and drive, drive changes with you know, the customer understanding work. And so I think that's, it was sort of a natural progression yep. for me, but it was interesting to hear some of the commentary, but to your point, it, that was the part that was a little nerve wracking for me. It's like, will people think of me and, and that I can write a book about, you know, building this, building out this customer centric culture. But I think that's the important part of it is, is that that's always been there in my work. It's not necessarily been at the forefront, but it's always been a part of the consulting that I've done so that we can take, like I said, take that customer understanding work that we do and really drive change as a result of it so, so it make, makes me wonder um in terms of who the audience is then because were you writing for someone a, a bit like yourself who who had this in them but just needed to have the confidence to help bring it out or were you were you aiming it at customer centric strategists who kind of needed a framework to build it around who, who did you have in mind or 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 is it okay for an author to say i didn't actually have anyone pegged in mind Oh no, I had to have somebody in mind. That was, right. that was definitely one of the things that the publisher, that the book okay. coach was like, who are you writing this for? Right. And I was like, well, and, and, and I, I, I think I wrote it for two levels, right? Mm -hmm. I wrote it for the leaders in the organization. I'm talking your C level. I'm talking your board too. I, I think people need to see and understand that if you're going to be customer centric first, what is it? And why is it important? And what's my role in it? You know? And I think reading through the book, you see that, this it is a higher level that needs to undertake a lot of the work that's in there. But I also wrote it for people who are, you know, like us who are practitioners or who who are consultants who have to go in and sell this notion and sell this concept and sell this type of a culture to an organization because you have to have in order to sell. Obviously, you have to understand what it is and what it means and and 
what it all entails. And that, and, and that I think was the problem because I think people talk too much about, well, we're going to make sure you're customer centric, but that, it falls flat at that point because they don't know all the components that need to be in place in order to make that happen. Brilliant. So that two is, levels. Yeah. Well, that, that's fabulous. I mean, that's great because I think when we speak to our book club, um guess we've got some in there who fit into both of those camps so it'd be really awesome. lovely to kind of get their different perspectives on it so yeah thank you so much and we're, we're going to be seeing you um with the the book club members and they'll be posting awesome. their questions and uh, we're going to really enjoy the next few weeks as we we make our way through your book together and thank you so much for, for writing it because it, it is i mean in in the writing i've seen of yours um more in the uh the posts and the articles you write you can see the strategist there. So it's great that you've got this platform to be able to showcase it. So congratulations yeah. and look Absolutely. forward to working with you on this. Thank you. Likewise, I, I'm so excited that everybody's reading this book and I look forward to answering questions and having a great discussion about it. Brilliant. We'll see you soon. Thank you.